Good afternoon, YouTube. It's your brother, Francois Campbell. I greet you all in the peace of the Lord. So, in my house, the Wi Fi is no longer working for some reason. So, I'm at my mom's house. That's a beautiful picture on the wall there that I painted. Well, I drew, I should say. And um, I just wanted to talk to you guys today about the power of fasting. The supernatural, miraculous power of fasting. And um, I just want to share a few scriptures Excuse me, to show what the Lord does in the midst of our fast. And um, we're going to be reading from Joel chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. And um, yeah, so let's begin. So in these verses... The land is made desolate. All the food is destroyed. The land is basically ruined. And we can see in chapter 4, Joel chapter 1, verse 4, where it says, That which the palmer worm has left, has the locust eaten. And that which the locust has left, has the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm has left, the caterpillar eaten. Amen. Brothers and sisters, sometimes in our families, the palm of worm has eaten up our marriages, our finances. Amen. Sometimes the locusts have eaten up our health, our relationships, our peace of mind. And the little that we have left, like our relationship with God, even that too, the caterpillar come and eats up and devours. And we are left broken, sad, hurt, humiliated and confused. It is in this time that we need to take instructions from the Lord. So if we go to verse 14, it says, Sanctify ye, this is the Lord now talking back to the people. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Amen. So the Lord is telling you in the midst of your struggles and your issues, sanctify your fast. This was God's instruction to the people for him to deliver them from their problems. The Lord told them to fast and cry unto him. Amen. Brothers and sisters, fasting is a spiritual weapon. One of our strongest spiritual weapons that brings miraculous results. Amen. Remember in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, it says that, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers and rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So our weapons are not carnal, but are spiritual. One of the strongest spiritual weapons that we have is fasting. Amen. Also in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6, it says, It's not the fast that I have chosen. Is this, this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and let the oppressed go free. Amen. And that we break the heavy yoke. Again, you can clearly see the Lord saying to his people that through our fasting, he will loose the bands of wickedness. He will undo heavy burdens. Amen. He will set the captives free and break every yoke. How wonderful is the power of fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we are in a place where we are spiritually weak. We lack the energy to even eat food, to come out of our beds. Our arms and legs feel like they weigh a ton. Amen. Our mind is in chaos. We have no peace. We have no money. We look to the left. We see no family. We look to the right. We see no friends. Amen. And we look to heaven. And sometimes it even feels like God is going on holiday. We know it will never take a holiday, but that's how it feels. Amen. We pray. We get no results. We feel lost. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, it is not because God has forgotten about you. It is not because the Lord has left you or because he doesn't love you. It's because he wants you to fast. God wants you to fast. The Lord knows the difficulties that you face. The Lord is with you in the midst of your storm. Don't backslide, don't turn to voodoo, don't turn to witchcraft. 
Don't consult palm readers or anything that the Lord calls abomination. Do not turn to alcoholism. Do not turn to smoking. Do not turn to drugs. Do not turn to your own understanding. Turn to the Lord our God and cry unto him with fasting and prayer and watch him move miraculously in your circumstances. Amen. Let's continue to read in Joel to see what happened to him in, the cir in his circumstances. So in Joel chapter 2 now verse 12, he says, Therefore also now, says the Lord, turn ye unto me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Amen. Again, brothers and sisters, you can clearly see the instruction of the Lord he gives to the people. Fast and pray unto him. As we continue to read, we will see what the Lord intends to do in the midst of these tribulations and trials that the people are facing. The Lord will act on your behalf in the midst of your fast. Joel chapter 2 still, verse 18 now, and 19. And it says, so this is after the Lord tells them to fast. The Lord is now telling them what he will do in the midst of their fast. It says, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Fasting is going to move the heart of God. And yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Let's just clarify something quickly before we go any further, because many people have a misconception about what the word wine in the Bible means. When the Bible talks about wine, it talks about fruit juice, grapes that are crushed to make a juice beverage. It's not talking about alcoholic wine. Alcoholic wine is known as fermented wine in the olden days. Where after you squash the grapes to make the juice, you seal it in a container, you leave it for a long period of time, and it now becomes alcoholic. We need to be specific when we're talking these things because they try to say that Jesus' first miracle was that he made wine. He made juice. The wedding in Cana, he made juice. For example, when you talk about money, you just don't say five monies. You don't say 20 monies, 2,000 monies. You say five pounds. You say $20. You say 200 euros. You say 2,000 dollars. You have to be specific. Now I'm going a bit off track, but I need to give you this little teachings. So anyway, the Lord said that he will send corn. He will send wine and oil. And the people will be satisfied. Amen. So we can clearly hear the Lord saying that after we turn to him with fasting, in the midst of our tribulation, he will pity his people. He will send corn and oil that we may be satisfied. Amen. Hallelujah. Fasting is a spiritual prayer weapon that brings results. It moves the heart of God and it moves the hand of God. As we go on to read in verse 25 and 27, and it says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts are heating up, hallelujah, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, and my great army which I sent unto you. Amen. So the Lord is saying that, that he will, after we turn to him with fasting, he will restore our families, he will restore our marriages, he will restore our relationships, our spiritual growth, our peace of mind. And whatever the enemy has destroyed, he will restore it. Amen. Verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord our God that he has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. Glory to God. After fixing our problems and healing our land, God will make our baskets are filled to the overflow. Our families will be filled with so much that we will praise the Lord for dealing so wonderfully with us. Amen. And the final verse says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and I am in, and I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Praise be to God. For God shall return everything that which was stolen from us. He will restore everything which was destroyed. Only he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, 
when the canker worm comes to eat up your peace of mind, when the caterpillar comes to eat up your spiritual growth, when the palmer worm comes to eat up your family, your finances, turn to the Lord with fasting and prayer. And this will move the heart and the hand of God, and God will move in your circumstances. Now, if you look elsewhere in the Bible to see where in the word of God, fasting caused the heart and the hand of God to be moved. Amen. For those of you who don't know the story of Hannah, she was a woman who lived with her husband, but her husband had another wife. Mm -hmm. And this other wife bore a son that Hannah could not. Hannah was able to conceive. This broke Hannah's heart. And on top of that, the other wife of the, womb of the husband would tease Hannah and provoke Hannah so much that it broke Hannah's heart even more. Can you imagine Hannah's pain, brothers and sisters? She's married to a man and can't give him a child. It saddens me to think that she might have felt even less than a woman. On top of that, her husband's other spouse not only gave him a child, but she had no compassion for Hannah's pain. She kept teasing Hannah and mocking Hannah that she was barren and worthless. So let's go to Samuel, the book of Samuel chapter 1. To see Hannah's story and how through fasting the Lord had moved in Hannah's circumstances. Amen. And we read from Samuel chapter 1, verse 6. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret, just like worry. Because the Lord had shut up her womb. Notice it says her adversary, the other wife, provoked her soul till she was depressed and sad to make her fret and worry. And in the next verse, you can see how this brought tears to Anna's eyes. Verse 7. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Hannah could even escape this torment going to church going to the house of the Lord, this woman would follow her there and still torment her so much so that she cried. Amen. She mocked Hannah. She provoked Hannah. Bearing in mind this woman lived in the same house as Hannah. So when she went back home, the torment continued. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, this those that are closest to us least understands our pain. It's the, those that are closest to us that hurts us first. Hannah couldn't escape the torment. She was at home being mocked. She went to the house of the Lord. She was still being mocked. On top of the fact that the other wife already bore her child and Hannah could not. Imagine how inadequate she felt. How hurt and broken her feelings was year in, year out. And to make things worse, her husband didn't even know what she was feeling or going through. As we read in verse 8, it says, Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? Lord have mercy. Can you imagine how far this man's understanding of his wife's pain must be for him to ask her these questions? Why are you crying? Why are you sad? Why are you not eating? And then have the audacity to say to her, am I not better than 10 sons? That must have made Hannah feel 10 times worse. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, know this. When nobody understands your pain, when you're in a room full of people but you feel so alone, rest assured that the Lord understands your pain and He is with you. Amen. Remember the topic is about fasting and praying. And from verse 7, Hannah stopped eating. Amen. She was broken, but she was still trying to win her battles. The Bible says that she prayed in spirit, meaning that she did not pray out loud. She prayed in her heart. 
Sometimes situation breaks us so badly, that's the only way we can begin to speak to God is through our heart. Because our spirit and our flesh, it's, we're just so stressed and diminished. But as we look in verse 13, it says, Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. Eli was a prophet of God. Amen. So whilst fasting, she spoke to God in her heart. Let's see if this moved the heart and the hand of God. Verse 17 says, Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the Lord God of Israel grant thee thy petition, though was asked of him. Glory to God. God has sent the prophet Eli to tell Hannah that he hath heard her cry and answered her prayers. In verse 18 it says, And she said, Let thy handmaid and grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. She stopped fasting because she knew the Lord heard her and answered her prayers. So she ate. Amen. And her countenance was no more sad. She wasn't broken no more. She was restored. Amen. Hallelujah. And verse 19 says, And, she, and they arose in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah, that's the other wife's name, and Elkanah, her husband's name, knew Hannah his wife and the Lord redeemed her. Just like how the Lord had restored everything that Joel lost in his land, the Lord redeemed Hannah. Amen. And finally in verse 20, it says, Wherefore it came to pass, when the time came about after Hannah had conceived, hallelujah, that she bore a son and called his name Samuel, which means because I have asked him of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Fasting here and prayer moved the heart and the hand of God. And Hannah had conceived a child. We can further examine in the word of God where fasting has moved the hand and the heart of God. We can see in Nehemiah, where Nehemiah had received word that the remnant of the Jews are in captivity and were in great affliction. And the wall of Jerusalem was broken down. So Nehemiah fasted unto the Lord for mercy and help. And it had came to pass that when I had heard these words, this is Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4. And when it had came to pass, when I had heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Notice Nehemiah's strategy to resolve this problem. He wept, he fasted and prayed unto God. And rest assured, brothers and sisters, that the Lord moved miraculous, miraculously in his circumstances. Daniel had recognized his iniquity before the Lord, so he confessed his sins and asked for forgiveness through fasting and prayer. Daniel chapter 9 verse 3 says, And I set my face unto God, and seek by prayer and my supplications, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Glory to God. Prophetess Anna, who was a widow for 84 years, served the Lord with fasting and prayer. You can read this in Luke chapter 2, verse 37. And she was a widow about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple of the, of the Lord, but served God with fasting and prayer day and night. Hallelujah. Cornelius, you can read in Acts chapter 10, verse 31 and 32, Cornelius fasting brought him a miracle. Acts chapter 10, verse 31 and 32 says, And Cornelius said, For days, four days ago I was fasting, until this hour, and the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, 
and said, Cornelius, this prayer is heard, and thine arms had a remembrance in the sight of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, hey, brothers and sisters, if the Bible is here and I'm looking a bit to the left, it's because I am on my second book called God is Knocking at Your Door, Glory to God, and I'm bringing you this teaching from a chapter that I've written in my book, which is why I'll be looking to the left a lot. If you look, you can see. Amen. But this is our things that the Lord has worked on my spirit to share with the brothers and sisters. And if you go to Acts 13, chapter 2, mighty men of God wanted to hear from the Holy Spirit. So they fasted for the Holy Spirit to give an answer. Um, Acts chapter 13, verse 2 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work where I have called them to. Amen. God was going to destroy Nineveh because of their sins and iniquity. But after sending Jonah to preach the word of God, they had accepted it and repented with fasting and prayer. You can read this in Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. It says, So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth. And from the greatest of them to the least of them, and because of this, God accepted their fasting and their prayers, and he forgave them, as verse 10 says. And God saw their works, that they had turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said he would do to them. And he did not. Thank God for the power of fasting and praying. Otherwise, the whole of would have been destroyed. Paul did an intent fast on his voyage to Rome with the men aboard his ship. Acts chapter 27 verse 33 says, And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. This intense fast was for the Lord to protect them. Verse 34 says, For there shall not one hair fall from the head of any of you hallelujah brothers and sisters jesus christ our lord and savior fasted to show mankind the way to salvation the way to overcome as in matthew chapter 4 verse 2 says and when he was fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was unhungered so if even jesus a sinless man fasted how much more do we ourselves as sinners have to fast. And whilst on the topic of Jesus, we will finish there, brothers and sisters. Glory to God. When the disciples was with Lord and he was teaching, glory to God, the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew, in, sorry, in Mark chapter 9, verse 28, How come we can't cast out the devils ye have casted out? And in Mark chapter 9 verse 29, the Lord replied and Jesus said unto them, This kind can come by nothing but through fasting and prayer. Amen. So brothers and sisters, you can see the immense power of fasting and praying, the untold miracles that manifest, the beautiful way it moves the heart and the hand of God. I pray, I prophesy, I decree and I declare that to you the reader will apply the principles of fasting and prayer to your lives not just because of your circumstances but because of your hunger to be filled with the spirit of god amen in jesus name i prophesy i pray and i declare this amen and please don't binge after you finish fasting amen especially not on fast food amen it is important that you can maybe start a fruit fast. You can do half a day. Don't just dive into three days without no food, no water, unless the Spirit of God leads you to. Amen? You don't have to give up food. You can give up games. You can give up television. You can give up social media. Amen? Just remember to stay in the presence of God and pray whilst you fast. Don't just go on a hunger strike. Amen? Whatever you empty yourself of, refill it with the presence and the power of God. 
and the Lord will send his angel to assist and minister to you and aid you on your fast. God will begin to move in your spirit and your circumstances. And please pick a fifth, a specific petition of why you fast and let it known be to the Lord. Amen. A specific start and end time. Let your prayer points be known unto the Lord and the reasons for your fasting and your praying. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Amen.